right, Spatial Berkey Academy viewers, you've asked for more content about spatial regression and working with spatial data. And today I have a quick little project that I need to do for a friend, and I thought that you might as well come along for the ride. A friend of mine wants to compare the results between how R calculates K nearest neighbor weights matrices or contiguity matrices and how MATLAB code that he found does it. We want to compare two things. So we want to compare calculating spatial weights matrices the correct way when you have longitude and latitude. You have to use a spherical, otherwise known as great circle distance formula when you have longitude and latitude. You have to take into account that these points are actually angles. They're not in a Cartesian or rectangular plane. So we're going to compare using it the right way compared to the wrong way if you were to treat longitude and latitude as Cartesian coordinates, okay? What I'm going to use here is the population weighted centroids from the U.S. Census Bureau. So for this example, I'm going to be looking at the counties of the state of North Carolina in the United States of America, and I'm going to be using the population weighted centroids. And what you can imagine here is, instead of just using the center of a county, which if it was a rectangle, you would just draw two lines, and where the two lines cross would give you the exact center of that rectangle. That's a normal centroid. However, what we want to do, I think it's a little more accurate, is to take into account where people actually live in the county. So if the major city in the county was in the northeast corner of this rectangle, we would want to scoot the centroid toward the northeast instead of just using the center of the county. So you can download these. You can just Google centers of population, uh, Census Bureau, and this page will probably pop up. And you can get them for the state level, county level, or the census tract or block group level. We're going to use the 100 counties in North Carolina for this example. So just select the state you're interested in from the little drop down box here, click go, and that downloads it to a text file. Now, for some of you, it might open it up in a new browser window or the same browser window. And if so, you can just click File, Save As, and you know, it'll save it as a text file. Let's go to R now. So I'll include a link down in the description of this video to a little file that has these commands for you. But I'm getting just about all of these commands from the reference sheet that I use. And I'll include a link to this too. It's the mother of all our spatial econometrics handouts that I am still in the process of creating, but it's got a lot of good stuff here. I'm using version 0.6, but I'll include a link to that in the description of the video as well. And we're going to be working with spatial weights here, so most of the commands that we're going to be using are going to be in the center here. But I have all the commands listed here that we should need. And the only library we're going to need to do what we're going to do here is the SPDEP library. So we need to load it. So let's do that first. And I'm going to, from that text file, it's a comma separated values file. Each of the entries in each row is separated with a comma. So I'm using the read.csv command and file equals, and you just put the name of the file in quotation marks here. So let's run that, and now we have this data item over here, and we can click on that, and it will show us what it read in. And it looks like it read everything in fine. Longitudes in the United States are negative, and latitudes are positive, so that looks fine. The only thing you might want to be careful about is when you're working with geographic data in the United States, this column here, County FP, is short for County FIPS code. A lot of times it's important to have the leading zeros here. So this code for the first alphabetical county in a state is 001. Of course, R, since we didn't tell it to do anything different, it read these in as numeric values and it dropped those leading zeros. Sometimes it's important to keep those if you want to match this data up with some other data that uses these FIPS codes that we use in the United States for geographic data. But we're not going to worry about that right now. 
So the next thing we want to do is create a little matrix out of the data that we just read in that we called nc.cent, C-E-N-T here. We want to make a little file or object that is just the coordinates, the longitude and latitude. And what we want to do is put the longitude first and the latitude second, because when we make the k nearest neighbors, it wants the x values first and the x values are the longitude. So we're going to use column bind that just glues two columns together. And we're going to do the longitude on the left and the latitude on the right. So let's run that. And now we have that other object here in C coords. And we can look at that and make sure that the longitude is on the left. OK, we're good. So now let's create the k-nearest neighbors matrix two different ways. First way, we're going to do it the right way. Longitude latitude equals true. And this tells the command that our coordinates are not on a Cartesian plane. They are not rectangular. They are spherical coordinates on the Earth. So let's create them the right way first and then the wrong way second. So the wrong way, we're going to tell it that those aren't longitudes and latitudes. They are actually just X and Y rectangular coordinates. Now, sometimes you'll have this if you're using something like planar coordinates. In the U.S., we have something called state plane coordinates, where generally you'll pick a point inside a state and you'll call that zero, zero. And then you'll just measure distances linearly. So they're not longitude and latitude type coordinates. They're rectangular coordinates then. You'll just measure from that point you're calling zero, zero in either meters or kilometers. So here we're going to do it the wrong way so that we can see that this matters for our results. So now we're going to take those k nearest neighbor objects here the nc.5nn, and so we're doing the five nearest neighbors, and the wrong version, and we're going to convert those into nb objects, neighbor objects. There are some commands, some things you can do on a neighbor object that you can't do with this k nearest neighbor object. So the neighbor object is a little bit more standard way of referring to neighbors or weights matrices in R, in the SPDEP package. So let's convert those with k and n to nb into neighbor objects. And now let's plot to see what we got. So let's plot the correct way. And over here we can see this plot kind of looks like the shape of my home state of North Carolina. And this just is a visual representation of which five neighbors have been assigned to each county. Now let's plot the difference. So there's a command called difference nb, where you put in two different neighbor objects here, the right one and the wrong one. And we're going to plot the difference and add the differences to the map, add equals true here. And we're going to color the differences red. So let's add those to our little map. And now you see the differences and the LTY equals two says make the line type dotted red lines so that we can very clearly see the difference here. And now let's add a little title here. And there you go. Nice little visual representation where we can see the differences when you do it the right way compared to doing it the wrong way. Now, what my friend wants is he wants me to send these neighbor files or these weights matrix files as a matrix. And we're going to just put them in an Excel file so that he can easily see the two results, the right way versus the wrong way. So to convert the neighbor version that we created earlier with the KNN to NB into a matrix, we use the NB to mat command. Kind of neat how they name it in a way that makes sense. So we're going to convert those into matrices. And when it's a matrix, we can click on it and we can see the weights matrix. Of course, in a weights matrix, these are row standardized. And most of these entries are going to be zero. There are 100 counties in North Carolina. And most of them will be zero. But in each row, there will be five non-zero elements. And they will each be one-fifth, 0.2. 
So hopefully you can see that a little bit there. And now finally, we want to write these two matrices out. And I'm going to write them out into comma separated values files. And then I can load those into an Excel worksheet and send it off to my friend and we'll be done. So the easy command to do that is just write.csv. And let's write those two files. And let's go to the little files tab in our studio here. So we can see as we run these commands, it's going to add those two CSV files here to our list of files. Run and run. And here are two CSV files listed there. And it won't be hard at all to import those into an Excel spreadsheet and send them off to my friend. And that's what I'm going to do right after I encode and upload this video. So I hope this has been, it's, it's short, I haven't done anything really substantial, but this is a task that you might run into from time to time. And I've already had a couple of people ask me about this in comments on a couple of videos, so I thought I would show you how it's done. So I wish you the best of luck. I will be uploading another video on how to do spatial regressions in R as soon as I can possibly do it. So thank you for your patience and your support. And I'll talk to you next time. I hope you join me then. This is Dr. Berkey signing out. Bye-bye now.